All right, so if you're trying to break into data right now, chances are you're feeling a bit overwhelmed. I've helped thousands of people land data roles, and most of them have had the same question that you probably have. Where the heck do I start? There's tons of skills to learn and tons of certifications to earn that exist out there. Everyone is trying to tell you what to do, but what actually matters when you're just starting off? In this video, I'm gonna give you a simple breakdown. The three core skills you need to master and the one tool that everyone's talking about that you should actually ignore, at least for now. Plus, I'll show you how AI fits into the picture and how to use it appropriately. By the end of the video, you should have a clear roadmap on where to go. The emphasis here is going to be on going deep with a few skills rather than superficial with many skills. This is also known as T-shaped learning and is a highly effective way of progressing in skills. That's because a common problem I see is people going too broad with too many skills. So this roadmap is designed to go deep with a few skills first to build a solid foundation. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. First, let's talk about AI. It exists everywhere, you can't escape it, and everyone's worried about whether it's gonna take their jobs. So the short answer is no, it's not gonna take your job as an analyst anytime soon, but you should know how to leverage it. For now, it's just another tool at your disposal. And if used appropriately, it can help accelerate your growth as an analyst. So again, it's not going to take your job anytime soon, but it will make writing your code much easier. That's why you'll see me in this video talking less about learning a bunch of different functions and more about learning concepts. So because of this, you're going to want to get really good at prompt engineering. So some ways to achieve that is giving tons of context and being ultra specific. You also want to be prepared to have a conversation with AI about your objective. I like to view AI as a personal assistant. So it's not just a genie in a bottle handing me answers, it's an assistant that is literally working with me and advising me to help me find the solution that I need. So here's a quick example. Say you're stuck writing a SQL join and you wanna to turn to AI for help. Here's what you might say for your prompt. I have two tables, one with orders and one with product names. How do I join them to show product names per customer? It's really not too complicated, but obviously it depends on what you're trying to solve. And the more you prompt AI, the better you'll get at understanding how AI actually thinks. Okay, so now let's move on to technical skills that you should learn. The order doesn't super matter here, but I am gonna lay them out in a way that I think makes sense to approach them. So the first is Excel. Excel is the most widely used technical skill, undisputed. It exists absolutely everywhere, every organization uses it, and it's been around forever. So because of this, you're gonna wanna use it, and many analysts do. I view Excel as like the Swiss army knife of technical tools. You can do pretty much everything with it. It doesn't do everything incredibly well, but it can do everything pretty generally well, and some things it does better than others, but it's perfect for ad hoc analysis especially. It's very easy to take some quick data, throw it in a spreadsheet, do some ad hoc analysis, get what you need, but it's surprisingly deep and powerful under the hood. So what I recommend starting with is learning basic functions and how they work, pivot tables for aggregations, and also understanding how to put together visuals. Once you get pretty comfortable with those, you eventually wanna move on to things like Power Query, Power Pivot, and DAX. These are more powerful aspects of Excel that many people don't actually know how to use, but understanding them can really make you a strong Excel user and help you to achieve so much more with Excel. Next, let's move on to SQL. So SQL is quite literally the language of databases. It operates behind the scenes of pretty much any database you interact with. And it's also probably the most fundamental data analyst skill. And especially when you're approaching trying to get a data analyst job and interviewing for jobs, you're gonna see SQL come up in a lot of technical interviews. In these technical interviews, you'll be assessed on your ability to create SQL queries and you'll probably be tested on your SQL writing ability. So you'll wanna get pretty comfortable with the tool and ready to do some live SQL coding in that live environment during an interview. I hate that that's a thing, but that is one of the realities of the job market for a data analyst. Not every job requires it, but many of them will. But SQL is used to query and clean data. And most data analysts are using SQL all the time to pull data, analyze it, and prep it for reporting. Again, it's the language we use to interact with databases and pull information from it. So for SQL, I recommend starting with the big six, which is select from, where, group by, 
order by, and having. And you'll also want to learn joins and case statements. Eventually, when you're comfortable with those, you'll want to move on to more advanced functions like window functions, CTEs, and subqueries. The name of the game with SQL is to practice, practice, practice. Hop on some sort of SQL interview practice platform. There's tons out there. And just try to work at SQL queries every day if you can. Because even if you feel comfortable with SQL, when you get in those live coding environments like I described, so much of that information will go out the window. So you want to be comfortable enough with it so that you can do it calmly in a live environment. Okay, so next let's move on to BI tools. So BI stands for business intelligence and they are essentially reporting tools. These tools are how you create interactive dashboards and help you to tell a story with your data. The most popular are Tableau and Power BI, but there's tons of BI tools out there. Doesn't really matter which ones you learn, but because Tableau and Power BI are the most popular, you'll probably want to start with one of those. I love Power BI. Tableau is a little bit easier to get up and running with because you don't need a Microsoft license, but pick whichever one you enjoy more and just understand that a lot of these skills transfer between tools. So even if you're really comfortable with one tool and you're interviewing with a company that uses a different one, it's a lot of those skills are probably going to overlap. And if you're interviewing with a good hiring manager, they'll probably understand that as well. So some things you'll want to start with are data modeling. So in Power BI, this looks like Power query in uh, Tableau you can do some data modeling as well and there's Tableau prep builder but just data modeling in general is an important thing to know and then you'll want to learn when to use what chart eventually once you get comfortable with that you'll want to learn how to blend aesthetics with utility so the sky is really the limit with uh, BI dashboards you can have some incredibly incredibly insane looking dashboards out there uh, but you'll want to learn how to take nice looking aesthetics and UX and UI and, and blending that with utility. So always function is going to be the most important aspect of a BI dashboard, but when you can incorporate strong UX UI principles, then you're blending utility and aesthetics and just creating an overall better experience with the dashboard. Okay, so we're keeping it simple here. Those are the three skills I recommend learning. So now you may be asking what about Python or R programming languages? So you should learn those, but I wouldn't recommend learning them right away. Definitely not when you're just starting off. So the problem, like I described earlier, is most people don't go deep enough in what they learn. And if you attempt to learn too many skills at once, you'll only go skin deep. And the thing about Python is it really is kind of a tough tool to learn. Sure, the, the basics might not be super complicated, but there's a lot to Python and it's quite frankly, just not used in as many beginner level data analyst roles. So my view is that if you're spending a lot of time learning Python, that's taking away from the time you could be spent getting better at Excel, SQL, and BI tools. And time is super crucial when you're trying to change careers. So it's better to be good at three skills than mediocre at like five or six skills. So I wouldn't worry about languages like Python or R until you've already spent a little bit of time in the field, or at the very least have gotten really, really comfortable at the three skills I already mentioned. Last thing I want to talk about is the learning process. Number one thing I could say here is to keep the focus on projects. So a common thing I see is people getting stuck in course purgatory. That means taking course after course without really making progress. You want to focus on building rather than just stuffing your head with knowledge. And don't just make a few projects. A lot of people will just make a few projects, add them to a portfolio and call it good and start applying to jobs. Now, I do think a few projects in your portfolio is the trigger to begin applying for jobs, but you shouldn't stop there with your projects. Chances are your first few projects aren't going to be really great. And the more projects you make, the better you'll get at the tools and the better your projects will be and the better your chances at actually getting hired will be. So you want to continually add new projects to your portfolio and even post them online. So posting projects to LinkedIn can be a great way to build some presence and create exposure. A lot of people I've worked with in the past have seen a lot of success from posting a project online and then getting recruiters reach out to them. So again, creating projects does a few things for you. It gets you better at the tool, it gives you something to talk about online, and it's a conversation piece for interviews. So whether a recruiter or a hiring manager saw it or brings it up or not, you still wanna guide the conversation 
conversation there as a way to talk about your skills. Okay, another thing is you wanna add a few certifications to your LinkedIn and your resume. Don't get too crazy with it. You don't wanna add like 50 core certifications that you've earned and throw them all on your, your resume or LinkedIn or whatever, because that can actually diminish their value. But a few core certifications can help to give a little bit of credibility to the knowledge that you have. You might also wanna consider more proprietary certifications like the Microsoft PL300 for Power BI or the Tableau Desktop Specialist or Tableau Data Analyst certification. These are pretty widely recognized and though they're exam-based, earning them can give you a lot of credibility. I'll also link a couple of videos I put together talking about these certifications if you're interested in earning them. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's my roadmap. I designed it to be very lean, but very effective. So if this video did help to give you some clarity, please like and subscribe to help the channel. Also feel free to drop a comment below on what you wanna focus on first or how your journey into analytics is going. And if you're feeling stuck or you need a little bit of help, check some of the links in the description that might give you some guidance. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.